Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Path of Exile Open Beta. So today it marks the Open Beta, and a few Godcraft members are going to be playing. Um, I just wanted to announce this really good company, Grinding Gear Games. Grinding Gear Games, Gear Grind, yeah, Grinding Gear Games, GGG. Um, it's a really awesome company. They, they wanted to make a Diablo-type game without ruining it, like Diablo 3, or Torchlight is a pretty cool game, but too cartoonish, etc. They wanted the old-fashioned, grim-looking game. So they came up with uh, Path of Exile. Um, it has some ideas from Final Fantasy and has some really, really unique ideas. And I'm going to show you just a quick, you know, five minutes here, ten minutes of the game. Um, the game is free to play. Um, there will be no more wipes after today, which has already happened. Um, and there is no lock content, restrictions, whatever. You would never have to spend a cent ever. Um, though, I hope if you do enjoy the game, you will spend a few cents on the company because they're a wonderful company. They've brought in, I think, 2.2 million uh, dollars into the game. They've employed quite a bit of new employees. They are adding more content all the time. They have most wonderful updates. When they update, they usually last a minute. When they do major updates, they last, I don't know, a few minutes, a, a couple hours at most. Um, so you know when the biggest update days for, say, WoW or in other games, they go down for like half the day? This company will do it for an hour, if that. Um, we just had an actual update, which required all the servers to reset, new client patch, etc. It lasted less than one minute just to give you an idea what this company is like. Um, nothing is pay to win in any way possible. Um, the only thing is storage. And you get a incredible amount of storage. Not only that, um, you can buy more character slots. But guess how many character slots they give you? They give you 25 character slots to start with. That is an amazing company. So I'm going to give you a little overview of this game. Um, I'm going to create a character, and I'm going to go down here to Hardcore League. Now, look at this. It says here, if its character is uh, killed in a Hardcore League, is moved to the Default League, which is the default. So if you're playing alone and not with friends, or even with friends, uh, maybe you can do a pack like if one dies, all die kind of thing. But anyways, you can make a character in Hardcore and actually see how far you can go, and for once not lose your work forever. What's the point of that? Why not send it to default league? I mean, why does you know why does it have to you know be obliterated and never exist again? So I'm gonna call my guy Kanehart, and I'm gonna do a witch here, they were right to fear me. and they'll give you a little description. And let me show you the classes. Actually, there's a duelist, a witch, a ranger, um, a marauder, a shadow, and a templar. Um, and they all have their unique abilities and etc. etc. Uh, I'm gonna show you in game here, so let's let's pick one. I was thinking, I'll just go a witch for now. So here we go. We're gonna contact server. There we go. So we're in game right now. Like I said, this is free to play. The game is about 5.5 gigs. Um, if you want to add me in game, by the way, just hit S. You can see Fugner is on there too, and just add Kane Hart or even Kane underscore. Uh, underscore, I think, was one of my names, or Kaner. Any of those characters that you saw, just add to them. If one of them doesn't work, I may have deleted it, whatever. Just add, try adding one of the characters. And anyways, I'll get a friend invite on any of my characters, and I'll add you. Um, I may not respond to you all the time. I'm a pretty busy guy. And also, I kind of soul a lot, and I have already a group of people I'm playing with. Um, so I'm not trying to be rude, but, you know, you can add me, and we can see each other and say hi here and there. Um, maybe you want to give me free items. Ha 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 ha. No. Um, hey, but hey, if you like this game a lot and you start playing it a lot, may, hey, you know, toss some items at me. So anyways, this is where you start. You saw I picked up an item. Uh, when you first come on, you may uh, want to change some of your options. You hit Alt to see everything around. But I go to Escape, Options, UI. And I like to turn on uh, Always Highlight. And Always so Show Sockets is kind of nice too. Um, also, I suggest everyone do this hide global chat hide the trade chat just do it you will thank me down the road <laughs> you can also show this corner map up here which is nice so you come in you pick up your first weapon which you would have probably had to hit alt to see because it was hidden and then you see this npc here he talks to you you just hit continue a zombie comes and eats him you kill him you always have a gem that's related to your class that you pick up um now, 
your classes here let me give you an idea your class has no bearing on you really like uh, like you can be anything you want the only reason your class has a bearing on you is the quests in the game will give you more gems related to your class. For example, this fireball, and this is a gem that you get. This is your spell. So you know in Diablo and other games, when you level, you get spells and skills, or you buy them, and they, they are suited to your class. There is no such thing. I can drop this on the ground. You can be a ranger and pick this up, and now you have fireball. And of course, the ranger can get the, this in many other ways, including buying them from vendors, I believe, and etc. And you put them in these sockets here, just like uh, you know Diablo, etc. But this game deals with sockets a lot more than most games out there. And there you go. Um, there's the ones that are spells, and there's ones that are supportive and passive, I believe, even. There's a lot of gems out there, anyways, that you can fill out in your armors, and they add up, and I think you can get up to six slots. And then there's even linked uh, sockets, where one gem uh, buffs and does other effects to another gem, and oh, it just goes on and on and on. Like, you can chain effect them, basically. It's really crazy. Um... When you put them there, they'll automatically hit, hit uh, like automatically show up on here. So this is your attack uh, bar, basically. You got this attack, this attack, this attack, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And they just get added there. Uh, so your left one, and by the way, hold shift so you don't move. Most people make the mistake of going like this and attacking. Use shift. Even melee guys, you should be using shift and holding down your attack most of the time. Um, or you'll end up running into the guys or through them. But uh, your right button here gets added and the next one's the middle mouse button but of course you can change this and add it over here for example Q or have them on multiple keys you know QW for example um, so yeah let me go through and just kill these guys and show you how this gem works anyways look at my aim sucks <laughs> there we go and you can see my health got a little damaged so I'm going to use that flask there and when I kill this guy, you can see my flask is going to go up again. So, uh, currently has 15 charges. And you'll see it'll go up. It has 16 charges. And mana flasks and HP flasks are not like potions. You know how in a lot of games you buy potions and you're always buying and stuff? They're trying to get rid of that idea. Instead, these offer you uh, a heal and you fill them up right here. It says... Can only hold charges while in belt refills as you kill monsters. So the more you kill monsters, the more you fill these. So potions actually, uh, I guess in a way, play an effect on you that are that you should use them. So you know in a lot of games you should only use potions in an emergency, or there's some games that like make you hold like 200 potions and you're supposed to use them all the time kind of thing. Well in this game you use potions as part of your strategy. You can't overdo it, but you have enough that you can use... Uh, to use in your strategy I guess um, here we actually got a loot here which is a burning arrow that's not even for my class but I can still equip it and I, unfortunately I can't use it because I'm not using a bow but if I just picked up a bow from one of these mobs I could actually start using a bow and that's that's like that I could be a ranger all of a sudden um, here we got a scroll of wisdom uh, which lets me identify items which is cool so now that we've been fighting, if we go back to I to open this up, you can take the gem out and you can see there 5 out of 70. Um, over time I'm actually leveling that gem up and you will level them up and you'll have a little thing that shows up here and on the side of the screen to actually pick um, and to level up the gem. Some people don't always uh, level the gem up because sometimes it's better to use like the low mana version. And I'm sure if some of you guys played um, other video games and MMOs and stuff. Sometimes it's better to stay with the lower level for now, just because of mana use and stuff. Maybe you don't have the mana for it, or maybe it's just better to play that way no matter what. Um, you know, less damage, faster casts, for example, things like that. And uh, yeah, so we just go through here and clear. And there we go, we leveled. Now, when you level, and <laughs> this is the part that's going to freak you guys out, um, you can pick out some passive skills. Um, this is where your class has the second, like when you pick a class, has the second uh, effect on it. This is the passive skill tree system. And basically, this is intellect up here, this is strength down here, 
and this is their decks down here. So, for example, you have witches up here. I believe you have ranger here, um, and I believe that's marauder there. Then you have like Templar, I think, something like Templar here or here. So for example, each class has its thing, and I think Duelist is down here in the middle. Um, but each one starts, so the Witch here starts at the top, because, you know, they're pretty much all into Intellect, and you get to dig in right into Intellect right away. But hey, I could start, you know, inching this way towards Dex if I wanted to, and become, you know, more mana-based uh, Archer, for example, or Ranger. Um, anyway, so you go in here and you can zoom in and you can see, you know, 40% increased uh, mana regenerate or 10% spell damage. Like these effects, these passive effects have a major uh, impact to your gameplay. It's not just, oh, you know what, you're going to, you know, change something that does like a 1% change to your game. No, no, no. They have a major, major impact. So basically the only two impacts picking a class mainly has is, well, I guess three is your look of your character. Um, the gems that drop on quests, not on drop, but the, the gems that you would get from quests, and um, where you start off in the passive skill tree, and you can hit P to bring it up, and this is the skill tree. And that's basically the effect it has. So in this game, you can be anything, everything you want. Um, there is no impact in that way. So well, let's finish off and go here. Die. Oh. Seem to miss. Okay, so this is the first boss that you fight, and he's not too hard to fight. And you can see I can get hit, and I, I hurt pretty bad. And once he gets halfway, he'll pull out a sword and actually do a lot more damage. We get hit five and get more mana here. So now you can see his damage is a lot faster. Well, not faster, but a lot more. But low level guy, I can tank him right on. But I can clearly kite him, of course, and not get hit, just like any other MMO. Um. Anyways, so we can loot stuff. I wouldn't loot all this stuff. Uh, I guess you can, because I know we're getting near the end here, and I can just sell it. But overall, you don't want to loot everything in sight. No need for it. And then you start at the first town. And here's the first town. Yay! Um, look at all the poor dead bodies down there. <laughs> um, so here's your stash over here on the left. And you get a really nice helping of st uh, stash space. Not only that... You can buy them an extra tab for $2.50, and apparently you can buy, like, unlimited stashes. Apparently you can have, like, something like a thousand stashes or something crazy like that. But this is a really nice helping, and you really don't need to store items. So, let's go over this person, and we finish that quest, and she, or she gave giving us a quest, and we can take these. You know what, we're not going to use blades, because we're, we're going to probably stick with wands, since we're going to be more a witch. Um... We're playing more of that play style. So we can sell this stuff here. And you get this little currency here. Um, and the currency upgrades over time and even becomes, I think, things like wisdom scrolls, etc. Um, items like this is your currency now. So it, no more, your currency isn't actually like gold and etc. They, they wanted to get rid of that. They wanted to get away from that. And it was a really, really good idea because it basically just promoted people selling stuff online and all this other crap. I mean, some people may still do that, but overall, um, I think it was a great idea and I think they did a good one. Now we talked to this guy and we finished this quest. We can actually pick a gem. So this is when you can see raising zombie, freezing pulse and spark. You can see these are more related to a witch, and this is what I said about, you know, that class. But like I said, you can still play any class and be anything. Um, so this one, two additional proje uh, projectiles, uh, deals a uh, pulse and uh, raising a zombie. I'm going to go ahead and try raising a zombie. I'm not really into pet classes, but I thought that would be a little fun. So let's put them there, and let's uh, blank the rest of these out. There we go. I think that's about it. So, and over here is a, uh, a waypoint pad, and you'll find lots of waypoints over time um, through the worlds. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. And over here, oh, I guess you're social here. You can see public parties, and you can actually join a public party. And so you see this guy, you can join them. And, of course, you can leave it, um, and you can join their world. Um, another cool thing is, and I'll just tell you a, tr tr uh, 
a tip here. If you hit control and click this, you can see this. So sometimes when you join a party, you may have been in one, and sometimes you end up going back and do it, whatever. So if you control click on portals, basically uh, you can see, you know, what instance you've been in, or even start a new instance. For example, I'm going to go in here and be like, oh god, something bad's happening, or I I'm done farming this spot. I can go out and then control click. And I can enter. Uh, I can enter the old one, of course, which will last for another 10 minutes or 9 minutes and 30 seconds. Or I can go ahead and start a new one. Basically, click new here, and there you go. Um, I don't know what's happening in here. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh, invitation received. I don't know who that is, but apparently somebody's trying to add me to friends. Was he out here? No, he's level one. So. Cool, I got a new friend apparently. Um, yeah, so I think that that's the basic gist of things. Um, if you go, uh, yeah, so these guys are usually your quest guys. This is your quest guy, quest guy, quest guy, whatever. Um, oh, that's not a guy, that's your storage. And uh, you can create a party. Here's your friends, public parties. Um, and then, of course, you, here's your inventory screen. Oh, another one here. Uh, where is it? Uh, here it is. Or C. Hit C. There you go. Your character screen. Um, a good way to judge. Uh, for once, this game actually calculates everything you have. So if you have an item that gives you an extra... Oh, look at this. 10% increased spell damage. If we take this out, your damage should be affected. I thought it did. 10% increased... Oh, spell damage. So this is your DPS a second. Um, but if we go over to, say, my fireball, it says 7.9. If we put this on here, it goes to 8.5. Um, this is a good way to gauge if you're, you know, you're getting something that's actually increasing your spell damage, etc., and actually having an impact on what you do. So if you take this out, we clearly are going to lose a lot of damage. Uh, a lot of MMOs out there that you play and have played don't show the most correct information. This is the first one that I've actually seen that does predict as much information as possible if i recall this will even try to guess like for example your crit will even say here basically um add into your damage per second if i recall i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure uh also you remember when i so showed you the passive skill here if you hit c up is intellect bottom left is strength and bottom right is dex that's sort of like how the passive tree is so intellect dex down here and then strength over here sort of the same thing so that's how it works and who is this is that pj p silent i don't know who that is i'll figure that out um but yeah so that's that's path of exile for you um like he said this game is not pay to win there is no lock locked content in any way that you have to buy or pay for um, and also, this has three acts, like uh, Diablo. When you get to the third last, and three difficulties, when I think you get to the third act on the third difficulty, you get this rare chance of dropping something called a map. I think it drops at level 66. This map opens a whole new game in the world. You get this map, you can go run it, you can upgrade the quality of the map. Sometimes you can get this world that's like a treasure map, basically. Like, just treasures everywhere. And then from there, you can get other maps, work on their quality, upgrade them, etc., and go further and further. Uh, partying in this game is good. I don't think there's any downfall to partying except more items drop. Um, the loot system is not like Diablo. Everything that drops anyone can pick up. Though they do have a very quick like 5 or 10 second timer on items uh, with the person's name. So like a roll of a dice idea. Um, and besides that, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Um, this game has a lot of content. It's pretty awesome. By the way, if you guys want me to, and just let me know, if you want me to do Let's Play videos of Path of Exile, I can do that. I mean, I'm a pretty derpy guy. You probably would love to watch me die and get owned and etc. But, uh, yeah, anyways, hopefully you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope you check out Path of Exile. And check the description below. I'll have a link on our forums where I guess some of the players can add their, uh, their character names or whatever, so you guys can add them and whatnot. And I uh, hope to see you in Path of Exile, and yeah, I, it's free, guys. Give it a try. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.